Hi everybody, this is Dr. Swanson with your video tutorial, if you will, for topic one, week one of our summer course, COM 362 Public Relations Writing One. I'm going to have a little video clip like this every week so that I can kind of help you stay focused and pick out what's important as you, as you go along through the week. So kind of my opportunity for a little face-to-face -face guidance in this asynchronous online class. The first topic area gets us all on the same page about the funda foundational concepts of public relations writing. The first topic area is strategic writing. And basically what strategic writing is, is writing with a plan. And that's what we're doing here. Um, because you can't just sit down and start banging out copy. It just, it just doesn't work that way. So we'll talk about that a little bit here in a minute. Make sure that you have carefully reviewed the syllabus and the calendar, as I pointed out in my introductory video. Um, make sure you have scrolled through Titanium and you understand how the page is structured, where the assignments are, where the quizzes are. Make sure you understand how this class is put together online. Make sure you have joined the team and that you have read the content related to Google Drive and that you can get into Google Drive. If you haven't done any of those things or if you haven't done even one of those things, stop now and go back and do it. You've got to look at the syllabus, the calendar, you've got to make sure where everything is on Titanium, you've got to join a team, you've got to make sure that you understand how to get into Google Drive. Oh, and I also forgot Portfolio. You've got to make sure you look at the material about Portfolio because all of that is the get up to speed information that you need to have for this class. So if you haven't done any of that stuff, stop now. Go back and do it, and then come back to this video. Okay, so in the first week of the summer class, there is a solo assignment, a team assignment, and a quiz. So you need to make sure that you've looked at the summer assignment descriptions, and you've read the quiz information. So you got to make sure you, you understand all of that, too. Because um, like I said in the, in the introductory video, this class moves really fast, and there's a lot of material here. And... You've got to be prepared to spend at least 10 hours a week, at least four days a week on this class because there's that much content. And, and you're going to need to work through those readings uh, in order to be able to master the concept skills that will allow you to practice the hands-on skills as you write the materials. The calendar shows um, that's what the calendar page looks like. The calendar shows that some of the readings are required and some are optional. The ones that are grayed in here are optional. Of course, I think you ought to read them all, but uh, the optional ones are not the real critical ones. It's the other ones that are critical, and the quiz questions will come from the other ones. So make sure you understand on the calendar what the different readings are and, and, and what's required. I also have supplementary materials in Titanium, and those show up here on the calendar as well so that you know every week exactly what I expect uh, you to be involved in. And then, of course, in Titanium itself, that's where all the material is. Um, so for this, Topic 1, Week 1, everything that you need for Topic 1, Week 1 is right there in that one area. And you'll want to use the Learning Outcomes Readings and Study Guide, which is a Word document right below here. You'll want to use that. Um, to also make sure that you're up to speed on all that, because that, that document kind of ties everything together. And we'll follow the same format every week. So, you know, sometimes students, uh, st sometimes students accuse me of, of putting too much content on here. Gosh, Swanson, you put so much content on there. Well, that's because I want to make sure that you understand. And, I, you know, I, so, you know, I, I spell it out a lot of different ways. And, and sometimes in the same semester, I'll get students who will say, Gosh, Swanson didn't have enough content on there. I was lost. Well, I'm trying to make it work for everybody. So anyhow, that's what we got. And, and I'd rather have too much content than not enough because I want everybody to be following together through this very busy five weeks. And I don't want you to have any questions about what you need to do and when you need to do it. Okay. So enough of the uh, introductory recap. Let's talk about this, this subject area, strategic writing. Strategic writing is writing with a plan. And, and I know um, I was a college student. I remember what that's like. You, know, you get an assignment, you go, oh, and then you sit down and go, you know, and you start typing it out. 
back when I was a student typing it out, you go. That's that's typewriter stuff for those of you who've never seen a typewriter. Um, so and I know that that is the kind of the prevailing mindset of college students. You know, just sit down and bang it out. And I do not want you to do that in this class because we're practicing for the profession here. And that's not how professionals do it. Strategic writing is writing with a plan. So this topic area is organized to get you thinking about an experience with the planning process when you write. So some of the things you need to think about. The organization. The organization you're writing for. Who am I writing for? Um, you know, if you're putting out a news release, who, who am I? This, this organization that's putting out the news release, I'm, I'm writing it for them. Who is this organization? And, and how do I interact with them? And what does this organization value? And how does this organization make decisions? And you've got to understand who it is you're writing for. Because if you don't understand that, you're not going to be able to write in a way that, that syncs with their values. Um, so that's really important. The audience or public that you're writing for and what those people want and need. You know, that's a key part of public relations. These people that we are communicating to, you know, the ones out there, who are they? What do they know? What do they think? Um, what are we trying to get them to say or do or believe? What do they already know? Are we trying to change their opinion or not change their opinion? All that kind of stuff is really important. And that's part of the strategic planning process. The technological means of disseminating the message. If you're writing something that's going to go on paper and be put in front of people, that's one thing. If you're writing something that's going to go on television, that's something else. Or radio. Or internet. And... and we could subdivide internet. Is it going on a web page? Is it going on Facebook? Is it going on Instagram? You know, where is this going? Because the technological challenges also play into this. You don't write the same way for a memo that you write for social media. You don't write the same way for a memo that you write for a web page or for a newspaper story or a feature article or whatever. So, how are we disseminating this information? Because that, that will factor into all of this. The legal environment involved. What is legal to do is not always ethical. And what is ethical to do is not always legal. And sometimes things are neither legal nor ethical. But we won't talk about politics today. Um, so that's something that has to be taken into consideration here. This first week we've got the the um, YouTube animation on copyright and fair use. You know, the thing, thing runs like four minutes, but it's really important because that's the kind of stuff that gets people hung up, you know. Let's say you're a, a PR student, you go out on an internship and the employer asks you to do something and, and to create some kind of document and you just go to the web and you, you copy, you grab copy and you plug it down in this document and whoo, I'm done. Um, you've probably plagiarized. You've probably taken somebody else's intellectual property and represented it for the client. And that's not right. You know, can't do that. That's a legal problem. That's an ethical problem. Can't do that. So we PR people really have to think seriously about the legal and the ethical challenges. And you got to you got to put that hat on, that, that legal scholar's hat on and go, am I going in the right direction here? And if, if you get that little sense that something might not be right, take your fingers off the keyboard, stop, call somebody, look it up, get some advice, do something, because you don't want to do anything that screws up the client because you'll be out of a job. And... We've got examples, we've got one really good example coming up in a couple of weeks about a PR person who sent a hopelessly unethical, irresponsible tweet. And she lost her job. And it became an international incident. So, man, you just gotta be really careful. You just gotta be really careful. So the legal environment and the ethical challenges, very, very important. So. Even though you're going to be working on two assignments this week, two memos, an individual one and a team one, 
before we even really get into the depth of PR writing, you got to give these things some thought. You know, what's this organization all about? Who am I writing to? What do they already know or not know? What do we need them to know? The technological challenges, the legal environment, the ethical environment, all that stuff is critical because you don't want to make a stupid mistake and find yourself out of a job. And I've seen it happen to a lot of people, and you don't want to be one of those people. So all that's addressed in Team One, or excuse me, in Topic One. Make sure that you read the Learning Outcomes Readings and Study Guide, the thing that's linked right down here, and and let that be a guide to your preparation in this area. Your solo assignment this week is the Coworker Memo. This will allow you to practice the steps for good writing that are shown in the chapter readings this week. Because writing is a process. You don't just sit down and bang it out. Writing is a step-by-step-by-step step step process. And maybe you've never thought of it this way before. Good. You're going to be thinking about that. You're going to be thinking about that way now. And I hope that for the rest of your career, when you sit down and write, you think about those steps because you don't just do it. Uh, so that's your solo assignment, the coworker memo. And then the team assignment is the civility memo. This will allow you to practice a little basic research skills, and it will help you get practice in taking a very complex subject and boiling it down to the simplest terms to get people to understand. And that's something that's really important in PR. And, and if you're a really good PR person, you can take even the most complex subject and boil it down to very simple, persuasive terms that people will understand. And if you can do that, you will always have a job. And um, something else that I will tell you, too. If you can write well across a variety of media, you will always have a job. In all of my years as an adult in the workplace, I have never been out of work because I can write. And I've always been able to get a job writing. And several of the jobs I got in the past that I really wasn't qualified for, I got because somebody knew somebody who knew that I was a really good writer. And that's how I got my job in, in television. I had not worked in television. Um, and I was hired to be a news assignments manager for a top 50 TV station because I could write. I knew how to write. And um, so they took a chance on this guy who had worked in newspapers and radio and never worked in TV. Um, I got my first job in a PR agency because they knew I could write, because I showed them clips of what I had done as a journalist. Um, here's a little secret. I have never taken an undergraduate public relations course. Never. I never took a PR course in college. Which allows you to say now, oh, he is wildly unqualified because he's teaching PR. No, 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 no. Um, my area of expertise was broadcast journalism. That's, that's the world I came out of. And I got into public relations because I could write. I was a journalist. I understood the media. I knew how to interview people, how to do research, how to gather facts, how to present a compelling story. That's how I got my job in PR. And that's how I ended up teaching public relations. So even though I never took a, a public relations course as an undergraduate or a graduate. Um, but I knew how to do everything that PR people do. And it's allowed me to be, to be very successful. So that's my ending little bit of advice here for you today. Be a sponge in this class. Be a sponge and soak this all up because you don't know where the world is going to take you. You don't know where your career is going to take you. you know, will, will public relations even exist in 15 years? I don't know. Maybe it'll be called something different. I don't know. Um, but if you can write, if you can do research, if you know how to create brand image for yourself or a client or a product or a service, if you can think on your feet, you will always have a job. And so beyond the concentrations, beyond the labels here, that's what we want for you guys. We want you to be coming out of here as competent, capable communicators who can sell yourself in addition to telling a great story for a client. And that, that too, is in part why we, we think the portfolio, um, e-portfolio is a really good idea because it will allow you to sell yourself as a competent communication strategist. Okay, that's my advice for today. Get going on topic one. If you have any questions, please let me know. I am here to help.
Thanks very much.